In today's video, I'm going to give you 10 drills slash tips on how to dramatically improve your carving. Now, throughout this video, I'm going to start basic, but we're going to get pretty advanced so that you can refer back to this video and constantly improve your snowboarding no matter where you are in your snowboarding journey. So let's get started. That's fun. So the very first thing we got to do is define what the heck a carved turn is. So essentially, when you make a turn or you're changing direction, the path in the snow that you leave behind on a carved turn is very thin, like pencil thin, very narrow, and there's not a lot of snow that sprays off. In addition is when you are making this turn, it's very quiet. Now on the flip side, there is a turn that most people do. It's called a skidded turn. Now this turn is traditionally a lot louder. The path that you leave behind is a lot wider and you're constantly slowing down or you're putting on the brakes as you're creating the turn. Now, super awesome turn, but this video is gonna be focusing on the first one, which is gonna be a carved turn. If you guys are interested in supporting the content at all, I have some awesome hoodies, gloves, hats, and I even have pullover jackets that are brand new, just dropped. If you're interested in picking up some awesome Benetech stuff or you're just looking for gear that's gonna hold up and be awesome, check out our shop at shopbenetech.com. You're amazing, let's get back to it. The very first tip that I have for you is when you're just starting out with your carving, the best body position is to be in a more centered position than when you are on your toes or your heels, you're trying to balance through the entirety of your edge. We're not shifting weight to one foot or the other. Now, a couple key tips when we're distributing that weight evenly on our toe side edge is think about pressing both of your shins equally against the front of your boot. So you're kinesthetically gonna feel the pressure evenly. Now, if I feel more pressure on my one foot versus the other, that could cause me to do more of a skidded turn, which we're not trying to do. And then when it comes to our heel side edge, what I want you to feel is that your calves are pressing against the back of your boot and the back of your boot is pressing against the high back. And while you're doing that you can also add a little bit more tilt by lifting up all 10 of your toes to the top of your boots allowing you to distribute that weight evenly throughout the board and tip number two is to eliminate all of the pivot essentially when you're doing a skidded turn you're doing a turn where you're pivoting your board causing it to skid or slide around well of course we're trying to eliminate that our goal is to make sure that our weight is distributed evenly and that we're pressing the board and we're not allowing that back foot to slide or the front foot to skid or slide around but we're really trying to just balance on the edge so if you can eliminate the pivot then you got a carve so this time, point number three is going to be a drill. And what I want you to do is find a nice flat area. And I'm gonna challenge you to balance on your toe side edge in that awesome position for a total of 10 seconds. We're gonna do this on toe side and heel side. One, two, three. I'm gonna hop into it. Oh, this is challenging. All right, so I'm gonna look in the direction I'm going. Shins kinesthetically feeling against the front of my boots. Now I'm gonna keep that shoulder in line, trying to keep those hips, hips locked, but I'm trying to distribute that weight evenly. So this is a great drill to practice this body position. And I think that was 10 seconds. But as you actually do this on the mountain and moving, 10 times easier. So this is a good drill to really feel those body positions. For a heel side edge, shoulders over the hips and knees, balance even, trying to press my shins against the back of my boots, trying to lift up my toes, and I'm trying to balance here as much as I can. Now, this is a really good time for us to practice. Is my shoulders too far down? Is my hips too far? I want to be in a nice athletic position, trying to keep our balance and trying to hold it. And the best part about this, you can do it the next time you go snowboard or you can even strap in your snowboard right now at your house and practice it. And if you want an even better challenge, hop on an old couch cushion because it makes the ground unstable. And it's a nice challenge to really identify this balanced position. Part number four is gonna be another awesome drill. Now, what I wanna be able to do is can I identify the difference between a skidded turn and a carved turn, but we're gonna isolate it to our toe side then our heel side. If you are a more advanced rider, wait to the end of this drill because I got something special for you. So our goal is to traverse across the fall line. Number one thing as I'm looking uphill, making sure it's safe. You're gonna notice that my board is skidding as we illustrated earlier. Now I'm gonna press the shins against the front of the boot and I wanna feel this slight edge mark in the snow. I'm gonna feel it again, I'm gonna feel it again. 
Now the goal is to be able to feel it for a moment of just identifying that stabbing of the board. I'm gonna stay on my toe side edge just so we can get some more practice. We're gonna do that again, but this time I'm gonna press my shins over the front of my boots and try to hold it a little bit longer and a little bit longer. And you're gonna notice that I went too far, almost lost my balance, so that's also a good point, is how far can we push it? Let's go ahead and do it one more time, this time holding it for even longer. Now for my advanced riders, I wanna see if you can go from skid to carve with the least amount of edge angle. So can I carve without actually dramatically tilting my board? The point of that drill was to be able to identify your carve versus your skidded, and can we do that with low edge angle? Cause it's definitely possible. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna flip over to our heel side edge, just like this. Now we're gonna do the same, same drills, but this time you are a little bit more blind to uphill. So make sure you look around or you have somebody like your filmer help you out. So our goal is to be able to go skid on our board, lift up our toes, skid, skid, carve, skid, carve, skid, carve. I'm gonna do this again, but I'm gonna go the opposite direction. Carve, skid, carve, skid, carve. The best thing to do is look back in the snow to see what the exact path was so you know if you're actually doing it or not. Drill number five. This next one requires us to have a lot more space to so find appropriate terrain that's pretty flat, allowing us to get some speed without picking up a lot of speed. But the goal is to point our board down the fall line, get in on a toe side edge, and progressively increase that edge until we get a sharp carve. This is gonna help us understand the levels of intensity of our carve. Now, when I do this, I am gonna be sinking down so I can help counter that movement. I'm also gonna be leaning into the turn to help counter all the forces. All right, so I'm gonna point my board down the fall line. I'm on a carve. I'm gonna increase, 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 increase. And as you do that drill, make sure you're looking around, but notice that as I got faster and deeper into the turn, I had to counter that by sinking low. Best part is we can do this on our heel side as well. So we're gonna start by pointing our board straight down the fall line after we look around. I'm gonna get a nice gentle carve and then try to increase, increase, increase and try to get a nice little hook in there. The best part about that is just being able to know what body positions you need to be in as you're getting into more of an abrupt or aggressive carve. Practice that one regular switch, toe side, heel side as an isolated movement. It's definitely gonna help you improve a lot. So number six is gonna be super fun, funky, and a challenge. So what you're gonna try to do is start off by doing a toe side of carve across the fall line, but before you start turning down the hill, you're gonna try to transition to your heel side edge, which is gonna be your downhill edge before you start going downhill. Now these are called early edge engagements, and the reason why they're funky, as long as our momentum is going across the fall line, we're not gonna catch an edge. But if we're going in a weird direction, our momentum's going weird, we could catch an edge. So you're gonna see that I'm able to actually turn slightly uphill, keep going across the fall line, transition to my heel side edge, and then you gotta be in an awesome stacked balance position. And the hardest part about this drill is you gotta just stand there and wait. Let that heel edge engage, wrap around, and you're gonna do the same thing on your toe side edge. So the goal would be early edge engagement turns, both heel side and toe side, and it's kind of scary, but I will say that momentum in this situation is your friend, just like riding a bike, going zero miles an hour, hard to balance, going 100 miles an hour, easy to balance. Don't go extremely fast, but momentum is your friend. Drill number seven, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move fore and aft on our board so that we have a lot more dynamic range through the length of our snowboard. You're gonna see me shifting my weight forward and backwards in the center of the turn. So from here, I'm gonna start on the heel side carve, I'm gonna transition into that toe side carve. Now I'm locked in, I'm gonna go back and forth. So when you're doing this turn, there's two different techniques that we can use. We can use our lower body, so my belly button stays in the same place, but notice that my board is moving underneath me. So the second method is that my upper body moves over the length of my board. Yeah, my board doesn't move, but notice that my weight is shifting forward and backwards. So let's go ahead and try that again. I would love for you to try both options which is going to be on our heel side edge we're going to make that nice toe side turn and then i'm going to start staying locked in but i'm still in that car so then you may be asking tommy why the heck does this matter well when you get into some more dynamic snowboarding sometimes you end up in the back seat the front seat sometimes you want to carve in the nose carve in the tail but having diversity in your riding and your skill you're going to be able to use that somewhere whether it's a trick 
whether it's recovery movements, but it's definitely freaking awesome. So number eight is a really awesome one. It's gonna be really challenging for me because I have a busted hip currently, but the goal is to do a heel side carve and a toe side carve, but in a nose press and a tail press. This is a next level of demonstrating your ownership of your body positions, your pressure management, and being able to tell your snowboard and body what to do without dying. So let's see if we can do it. And if you see it, that means we did it. All right, so I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna shift onto my nose. I'm gonna try to get a carve, just like that. I'm gonna go to heels. <laughs> nice, we actually did it. I hope you got the shot, we're gonna try it again. Now the impressive part is I actually did it. I'm so pumped. All right, so we're gonna go toe side. Try to carve, try to find that angle. And then toe side. Woohoo! That is super fun, super sketchy. Now, obviously, the other part of this is can we go tail press carve? I think it might be a little easier, but we'll find out. So our goal is to just carve on the last third of our edge. Let's see if we can do it. Carving. There we go, got a nice little carve. Toe side, got a little carve. Woo! Now those are definitely challenging and I recommend finding a really nice terrain for it that's not super gnarly so you can manage your speed. But if you can link them, oh, those are hard. I don't think I can link them at the moment, but that is super fun. Now getting into number nine is going to be an awesome challenge slash drill and it's can we be as dynamic as possible, allowing our body to get so low to the ground that we can either touch our backside or tailbone, or can we touch our knee? So we're gonna start off with a heel side turn and do our butt touch first. Let's see if it's possible. Now the key is staying centered, having most range of motion, lifting up your toes so you lock that edge in. And now I'm gonna do it in three, two, one, lock edge, touch butt, stand back up. Notice that I was able to get low, then tilt over. If you want it to be a little easier on yourself, if you find steeper terrain, then you don't have to go as far, but if it's just flat, you have to go really, really far. You can even do tricks out of it, because that's fun. Now when it comes to the toe side edge, we're gonna do a knee touch, but the knee touch is a nice sinking your belly button down. We wanna get low, then we wanna tilt over towards the slope, and then I'm gonna extend my knee over my toe or over my binding, allowing me to touch the snow but I don't want to do it so aggressive that I'm going to slam my knee in the ice because that is literally not the sickest thing ever. So let me give you a demonstration and do a nice little knee touch. So I can do this pretty small, pretty mellow, knee touch. Boom. Notice that my spine is upright and I'm really sinking down. That allows me to carve, 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 touch. Not super aggressive, not super gnarly, but still a good little challenge. Number 10 is gonna be one of my favorite drills that I teach other instructors, athletes, or whoever's a snowboarder, is to do extremely quick edge rolls. Now the goal is to be able to go heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, as quick as possible, but remaining in a nice carved turn. So you're gonna see me do that right now. Dropping in. Three, two, one. So getting low, edge roll. And then notice I'm making them bigger, bigger. And then if you're looking for a challenge on top of the quick edge rolls, think about sinking your belly button, doing those edge rolls, but make larger turns, but keep your belly button in the same place. Whoa! <laughs> Literally, I was waiting for you to absolutely take me out. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. And if you're digging the content or you learned anything, definitely give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and definitely come back to this video or the channel because my goal is to make you as awesome as possible. I'm gonna end that there. Peace.